Hello YouTube. Today we're going to learn about bioplastics, how to make some, and what they're all about. For this experiment, you're going to need 9.5 grams of cornstarch, 60 milliliters of water, 5 milliliters of glycerin, and 5 milliliters of 5% acetic acid in water, or vinegar. You're also going to need a hot plate, a beaker, a glass stirring rod, and either tin foil, wax paper, parchment paper, or a silicone baking sheet. Start by charging in your 60 milliliters of distilled water, then charge in your cornstarch. Start stirring and agitating till you get an even homogeneous suspension. Charge in your glycerin. It's pretty thick, so make sure it all gets in there. And mix thoroughly. Then finally, you can add in your vinegar and again mix it all up. Now turn on your heat and start stirring like crazy. Now what's the chemistry that's actually happening inside that beaker? Well, starches are polysaccharides, or large branched polymer chains consisting of sugar molecules. As you heat the mixture, the acetic acid hydrolyzes or breaks the bonds between the branches, and this leaves you with long linear chains of polysaccharides, or sugars. Um, ordinarily these linear chains are fairly stiff, but because we added glycerin, this acts as a plasticizer, enabling the plastic to be somewhat flexible and not brittle. Now, after you heat for a while, you end up with a thick, viscous goo, and if you heat for a little longer, it turns a little bit clear like that. Take the mixture and pour it out onto your sheet, your tin foil or silicone baking sheet, wax paper if you don't have either of those, and just spread it out. If you're making this for fun, you don't need to be too careful about thickness control. As you can see here, after it's cooled down a little bit, it's a thick, opaque layer of almost like a gelatin on the foil. And uh, even as hard as you try, the thickness isn't very even. You get lots of little bumps. But after a week of drying, you end up with a plastic film like this. This plastic film is very thin. Thickness is fairly even, despite the unevenness in the uh, molding process, but it's quite strong and stretch resistant, tear resistant. Most of the tears you can see here from actually trying to remove it from the aluminum foil, hence why I recommend a silicone baking sheet. But it's tear resistant and really can't break it too easily. Now, what are pl bioplastics good for? Well, to start off, you have to think about what a bioplastic is. Bioplastic, by definition, is a plastic or polymer derived from a biological source that's renewable versus a petroleum-based source that is non-renewable. Now, if you think about it, some good uses for bioplastics are disposable plastic things like drinking cups, utensils, and uh, plastic wrapping films. You've got a polystyrene cup on the left and a corn-based cup on the right. They look exactly the same and they function the same. But one will stay in the landfill for 20 or 30 years, probably much longer, and the other one will degrade within a few years. Now on the underside of these cups you have a recycling symbol. This one has a polystyrene symbol, but this other cup is classified as other. This cup is made of, out of polylactic acid, or PLA. It's a uh, a thermoplastic, so it's only good for cold drinks, and it's considered compostable. But what's the difference between compostable and biodegradable? Well, the European Union considers compostable plastics to be biodegradable films no more than 20 micrometers thick. That's pretty thin. You can't build thick, sturdy objects out of them. And in terms of how well you can degrade these plastics, it's uh, not very easy. They're surprisingly durable. Here we have a couple clippings from one of those degradable plastic cups stirring in hot sodium hydroxide, specifically 2 molar sodium hydroxide, pH 14, at about 90 degrees Celsius for about 5 hours. 
and that didn't even do anything to it. And then I gave up heating and left it stirring for about a week. And even after a week of stirring, it still looks exactly the same. There's basically no degradation other than a little bit of warping and swelling of the plastic. Again, these cups are rated to degrade over two to three years. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about bioplastics. The take-home message here is that bioplastics aren't a fix-all tool to a problem. The problem that is waste. And as cliche as it sounds, reduce, reuse, and recycle are still very applicable because this stuff still takes up landfill space, it still takes time to degrade, and it's still energy and material wasted. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment.